Good morning, church. It's so good to be with you this morning. And for those of us visiting us for the first time, my name's Hector, and it's so great to have you here with us this morning. We trust that you're going to have a great Sunday. Now, a while ago, I did a short, short-ish, 650-kilometer motorcycle trip with a friend of mine. Now, we had to be at our venue at a very specific time and we left a bit later than intended. So, so needless to say, we, we tucked in and we rode, uh, can I put this, enthusiastically. So in this enthusiasm, we missed one fuel stop. And um, we would later realize that this was a very important fuel stop. Now, I bet you see where, where this is going. So. Needless to say, it wasn't long before our bikes were withdrawing from the last bit of fumes left in the tank. And that's how our journey unexpectedly got some time added to it. Now, in life, have you made plans, set things in motion and and just as you get going, just as you're in the midst of things and you're on a roll, that unexpected, unpleasant surprise hits. Life hits you with that curveball and everything changes. Maybe for you it's as simple as a motorbike trip, unexpectedly getting some time added to it. Or maybe it is things at work taking a turn for the worse. Or maybe for you today, it is a relationship or finances just not working out the way you planned it to work out. And as you are trying to, to figure out things, as you're in the midst of this mess, trying to to find your way in, in, in the confusion, along comes someone and, and says to you, you just got to have faith. Things will work out. And from where you at, you're like, dude, you've got no idea what I'm going through. I mean, saying something like that, it's much easier said than done. So there we were, next to the highway, no fuel in the tank, faith in the heart, and just as we were about to implement one of many plans to get to the next fuel stop, there stops a nice young couple with their truck, and they help us to get to the next petrol station. Now, I recently watched a video clip of a retired Army Green Beret. And in this video clip, he, he talks about being mission ready. And he mentions the four F's that you've got to have to be mission ready. And they are faith, focus, fitness, and fundamentals. And he goes on to say that, that you've got to have these four F's in place because sometimes a six-day mission turns into a 23-day mission. Sometimes a 21-day lockdown turns into a two-year mess. Now, I want to encourage you this morning to, when you get home, spend some time in, in Hebrews 11. For, for me, this is, this is the faith chapter of the Bible. And Hebrews 11 verse 1 to 3 has this to say about faith. Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in the days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. So simply put, faith is trusting Jesus fully 
and trusting him finally, trusting his timing and trusting his provision. So then practically when life hits, what does faith look like? Regardless of whether you find yourself in in a mess, treading mud, trying to find your way in all of this confusion, or whether you flying high, having the time of your life, what does faith look like? Now, to unpack this, I want to turn to the story in Genesis 22, the story of Abraham and Isaac. And we're going to pick up this story from verse 4. So, Abraham and, and Isaac and some servants and a donkey, because someone needs to carry everything, they were embarking on this journey to a place where God told Abraham to go. And as they got close to this place, they stopped and, and Abraham said to the servants, guys, you wait here. Me and my son Isaac, we're going to worship and both of us will be back later. Now, have you ever read uh, this verse and realized that Abraham had so much faith that both him and Isaac will return? I mean, he hoped that both him and his son will return. And so he spoke life over that. And in the same way, you and, and me, we are to speak life over the things we trust in God for, the things we are hoping for. I mean, just like Abraham who said to his servants, we'll be right back. And then it, it's so significant for me to, to see that, that he says that they were going to go and worship. Now, our faith is, is strengthened and, and it grows when we worship God, when we give thanks for what He has done in our lives, when we worship Him for the things that He's given us, when we worship and give thanks for the things we are trusting Him for. So, when we worship, when we give thanks, change takes place in, in our hearts and in our minds. So, give Thanks for praise is the key to breakthrough. So Abraham unpacks this, this donkey and, and he gives the, the wood to, to Isaac and, and he himself, he takes the tools. Now, to just pause there, I think the question for, for you and for me this morning is, do we have the tools for the job. Now, we see the first tool that Abraham took was, was the fire. So, for you and me, we are to carry the fire of faith in Jesus. We are to shine the light of wholehearted, steadfast hope in Jesus. And then we see that the second tool he took was the knife. So, for you and me, do we have a toolbox from which we can take the tools for the job, the right tools for the job? Not a side cutter where you need pliers, but the right tool for the job. Now, this toolbox is our relationship with God and, and knowledge of His Word. That's our toolbox. And the tools, those are the things that God has equipped us with as we've grown and walk with Him in relationship. So from that foundation, we'll be positioned to be victorious with Jesus. And we see then that Abraham was going to use these tools for worship. And in the same way, you and, and me, we are to use what God has given us for His glory. Take what God has 
equipped you with and use it well. Now, to jump right back into our story, I can only imagine that since Isaac was old enough to carry the wood, he must have been to a few sacrifices with his dad. So he's got a good idea of how this thing works. And, and I'm just thinking that, you know, as he's walking with his dad and checking out nature, all of a sudden it, it, it must have dawned on him that, hey, wait a minute, I'm carrying the wood, dad's carrying the fire and the knife, but we should sacrifice something. What are we going to sacrifice? And then we see in, in, in verse 8, he, he asks his dad a question. Now, I reckon this must have been an incredibly tough question for Abraham to answer. We see that Isaac asks his dad, he says, Dad, I've got the wood and you've got the tools, you know, the fire and, and, and the knife, but what are we going to worship? And once again, we see Abraham's faith. He speaks life over that, what he's hoping for, what he's trusting God for. And he says to his son, my son, God will provide a sheep. So you and me, we need to be ready to answer those tough questions. You and me, we need to be ready to explain the, the hope we profess, the, the faith by which we live. So as this story unfolds, it gets to a point in the story where I reckon there was a few very tense minutes. We see Abram building the altar and he stacks the wood and just as he was about to do the unimaginable. An angel from heaven calls him, Abraham, Abraham. And he answers and the angel says, whoa, stop. Do not touch that boy. And I can just think myself being there, you know, in this confusion and Abraham looking up. They hear something in, in, in the bushes and and Abraham and Isaac, as they turn their heads, there they see a sheep. There's the ram stuck in the thicket. God provided a sheep. So then we see Abraham's faith again in the name he gives this place where all of this played out. We see that, that Abraham remembers that I spoke life. I told my servants, both me and my son will be back. And when he was asked a tough question, he spoke life. He professed his faith, his hope. And he said, God will provide a sheep. So then, as God provided for him on this day, he gives this place the name Yahweh Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. And I think this is such a significant, such a powerful phrase to remember. Yahweh Jireh, the Lord will provide. So when you find yourself in, in that space where you don't know if you're going to get a salary at the end of the month, you don't know where the finances are going to come from, you don't know how things are going to play out in that crisis that you are faced with. Remember, the Lord is your provider, Yahweh, Chira. Now, many of us are faced with a lot of uncertainty for the new year that's fast approaching. But I reckon if, if we go and, and sit down and, and just think for a, for a minute, maybe 10 minutes, everything that, that God has done for you, not only this year, but, but in all the years gone by, and you make a list of how God provided, how He healed, how He kept you safe, maybe even how He, how he saved you. 
all of that will give you hope for what lies ahead. All of that will help to strengthen your faith for the new year that's fast approaching. Now, I reckon that this is what gave Abraham hope and faith on that specific day. I think that, that he probably remembered that not too long ago, the Lord helped him and his small band of warriors to defeat a couple of kings and, and their seemingly invincible armies so that he could rescue Lot. He probably remembered also that at an age where it's humanly impossible to have kids, God blessed them with Isaac. And he probably also thought to, to everything back, back home and, and how he's a wealthy man, a rich man. God has given him everything that he needs and then some. And I think that Abraham remembering all of that was what gave him hope and faith on that day. So remember what God has done for you. And may I just put a short note in there and, and, and say that don't be like, like Adam and Eve who were so focused on the one thing they didn't have that they did not see everything else that God has given them. And in the process, they sinned and missed out on God's best for them. Now, I don't know where, where you are at in your life. Maybe at this stage you are having the, the best December in the past two, three years. Maybe you're flying high. Maybe you are faced with a lot of uncertainties and challenges and you're in the midst of a crisis right now as you sit and listen to this message. So I want to ask you then this morning, hearing all of this, what is your next steps? What do, what do you think is that thing that, that you can put into practice to help build and strengthen your faith, faith to help apply your faith. So maybe this morning you need to start worshiping and, and thanking God for what He's going to do and for what He has done. Maybe this morning you need to remind yourself of everything that God has done and from that draw and strengthen your faith for this thing that you're facing right now or that thing that's that's imminent draw from what god has done for you already and let that give you hope and strengthen your faith maybe this morning for you it's as simple as just taking that leap of faith going all in and trusting god 100 percent for this one thing. Or maybe this morning you, you're hearing all of this and, and you're wondering if, if maybe you should take the chance and, and invite Jesus into your life. Now, regardless of where you find yourself this morning, I want to encourage you to, to believe in God because in all His grace and love, He'll come and meet you right there where you are at. If you are experiencing some wonderful times, God will come and He'll speak into that joy. If you are faced with some challenges or dealing with a crisis right now, God will come in all His grace and love. Speak into that. He'll lift your arms. He'll strengthen your faith. And with that said, I want to wrap up this morning and close with us a 
close in prayer for us. Let's close our eyes. Father God, thank you for this morning, Lord. Thank you that we get to spend time together as, as believers. Lord, thank you that no matter where we find ourselves in our faith journey, we can come to you, Lord, and you can speak into our lives, Lord. You come in and sit and walk right there with us. Lord, and guide us in the decisions we need to make, whether it is to, to start worshipping you or just speaking life, whether this morning we are to invite you into our lives, Lord. We trust that in your love and in your grace, Lord, you're going to come and you're going to strengthen us. I want to thank you for each and every person that joined us this morning, Lord. I want to pray that you keep them safe and protect them in this festive season. And that you bless them this day. And we pray for this in Jesus' name. Now, as you're about to, to hit that stop button, remember, the Lord is your provider. Have a great Sunday.